The story of Christmas is a fascinating one. It has spilled down generation after generation of human. This experience of divinity wrapping himself with flesh. The significant points that God loves us, that he was sent to us, his only begotten son, so that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. Undeserving, unmerited, unworkful. But he gives us the greatest gift that humanity would ever receive. Soteriology is the doctrine of salvation. It is the teaching of how that which is dirty can be made clean. That which is filthy can be washed with the blood of Jesus. Sin separates us from God because God is holy. Can I get a little help right now? And to bring us together to this holy God being an unholy people, he gives to us the atoning death of Jesus Christ. Listen to Isaiah, as he says, unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government is upon his shoulder. And he's a wonderful counselor. And you're going to help me out, you? Mighty God, everlasting Father. Tell somebody he's the prince of peace. He brings to us the benefit of peace. He brings, he delivered to us the government on his shoulder. He brings to us, he, he bethus upon us this mighty God. It's time to tell him thank you. As we approach the Gospel of Matthew, he's pregnant as he delivers to us the significance of the birth of Jesus. The virgin birth of Jesus. Mary was a virgin. She brings to us the gift to of humanity. You think about, contemplate about something during this time to get happy about. You ought to get happy over the fact that you are saved. You are saved because the greatest gift that has ever been given was given to you even before you were born. Listen, listen to Matthew, the tax collector, as he delivers us this text. He says to us in chapter 2, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, there come wise men from these. These are Historians suggest to us that these were astrologers, those who studied the stars, who looked up into the sky and read the book, the Old Testament, the prophets, the laws, and the Pentateuch. And there they look up in the sky to see the coming Messiah. I told you last Sunday that, that those that died in the Old Testament died without the promise. Yeah. They died believing in the deliverer yes. or the Messiah, yes. which is our Messianic King. Yes. They died believing that he would deliver them. Yes. If you've ever been in any form or facet of captivity, you know that you need a deliverance. Yes. Now we are in the New Testament and Matthew picks up his pen and paints the picture of this Messianic king as he would arrive in Bethlehem of Judea. The Jews would not accept him because they were expecting him to come in some hurrah. 
in some great grander experience. Yes, sir. They was expecting him to come with much pomp and pronoun, yeah. much announcement of his arrival. But he comes as an humble servant. Wish I could pause that moment and tell you that they don't ever look for Jesus in the great, the grand, the outstanding, the expel. Look for Jesus in the small, insignificant. Here we are, humanity, and we like to make a lot of noise about what we are doing. But Jesus is that solid voice that works in our life. Listen to him in here. They, they stuttering and meditate over the star. Listen, listen, listen to the text. And, and as they as they as they follow the star, picture picture of the children of Israel as they was going en route to the promised land. Forty years wandering in the wilderness. Pillar of cloud by day. Pillar of fire by night. Man. You could have asked one of them, where are you going? Yes, man. They wouldn't have been able to tell you. Yeah. All we're doing is follow. Right. Cloud by day. Yes. And the fire by night. Yes. Uh, I wish you could get the significance of that. Because most of the time when we shot our own plot, we're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> system is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our navigational system is not our intellect, it's not our ability, it's not our education, it's not what we know. Our navigational system is Jesus said, turn left. Yeah. When everybody else says, turn right. But the Holy Spirit said, turn left. I wish I had a little you don't know the danger that lies ahead of you when you're leaving yourself. You, you don't know, you don't know what, what's down the road when the Lord is not leaving you. Anybody here know he's able to navigate you. He, he's able. And there you are. So what? Yeah. <laughs> 
to leave, do those vital things that I need for this journey. And then you get in the car, go down the road and see a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. See an accident. Develop value. 